Welcome to Matazone HD Sportsnet, presented by the JMU Alumni Association. We're joined by women's soccer head coach Dave Lombardo Good for morning. the weekly coaches show. Good so morning. Coach, we had a very successful weekend. We had a 3-2 win at Delaware, yep. and then we had a 1-0 win yesterday at Drexel. So two road wins in the CAA. Yeah. Uh, talk about those games. Well, like we, we talked the other night, road wins are hard to come by. Uh, conference play is just a whole different animal. Everybody's fighting for those six spots. So very few uh, games will be decided by more than one, one goal this year. Everybody's just fighting uh, tooth and nail to get their results. And um, Friday was kind of an unusual game for us. So we, um, we got uh, an early lead. We got uh, up 2-0 uh, by two nice goals in, in the first half. Rachel Ivey's was one of the prettiest goals I've seen all season long and best certainly of her career. Um, and then we race out to a three-goal lead uh, fairly early in the second half. And I don't know if we subconsciously parked the bus uh, or not, but uh, we started making some substitutions because we did have a game on, on Sunday. And uh, Delaware really threw er everything uh, but the kitchen sink at us. And they got, um, they got a nice goal and then um, really just kept coming at us. And we, we bent. Defensively, we gave up a second goal, but uh, Ellen Forrest was really the uh, the key uh, to that victory. Um, we had, I think, she had a career high yeah, uh, eight, eight saves. saves. Uh, I think at least three, if not four, of those were of the one v one breakaway variety, where she just ends up going out and snuffing uh, the shot before sure. it became uh, a problem. So you know, I I really credit uh, her. Uh, she's playing in the upper limits of her ability, and that's what we really want our our seniors, I want all our players to do that, but certainly your seniors because that provides the inspiration and leadership to, to win games like that. And uh, on the weekend in general, I think uh, between both games, she had 14 saves and was the big difference even on Sunday's result. Great. And yeah, those two road wins, you're now top of the CAA, the only team in the conference that has not lost a conference game so far. Mm -hmm. uh, what does that do for your confidence going ahead, forging into sort of tougher matchups in the conference? Yeah, you know, I, I think our kids are smart enough to take one game at a time uh, right now. And like I said to you in the office, it's not where you start, it's where you finish. And, you know, your fortunes can change very quickly on, on a weekend. And so, you know, our motto each week is to get our six points, and uh, we're going we're gonna to continue to do that. I think right now we are playing uh, very confidently. Uh, our juniors and seniors uh, have really – um, establish their leadership and maturity stamp on this team, and you know the, the freshmen are are contributing and, and helping us out uh, where they can. But right now, this this is a team that uh, we've got a lot of kids that have come close the last two years that are really uh, driving uh, are the driving forces behind all this. Yeah, and we just got word a few minutes before we started filming today that Ashley Herndon was named Co-Player of the Week for the CA this week. Mm -hmm. She had an assist. And the game-winning goal on Friday, and then the game-winning goal on Sunday. So, what does it do for you as a, a coach to have someone like that, you know, help and carry the team? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, you want kids to reach their their potential and ability, and, and she is a special player. And I've said this over and over again. And what makes her special is she's probably the most humble kid you'll ever meet. Uh, she reminds me a little bit of Corky Julian, who was here. A few years ago, that you know, whenever you would start talking about accolades, they would just blush and then they would run away from the conversation. And she doesn't really care about that. She wants to help her team. She wants to play well. And uh, for me, it's just exciting to watch her get to the next level. Uh, she is evolving as a player. Um, you know, player uh, teams are marking her uh, or attempting to mark her out of games and. She's still been able to find a way, or we've moved her, and she's versatile enough to play two or three different positions to find the freedom to uh, to get her goal scoring touch. So I, I'm really pleased uh, with that, and I'm I'm excited for her. Yeah, it's funny you mentioned Corky Julian because early in the season, Ashley Herndon had tied Julian's record for consecutive games, nine consecutive games with a point. So Correct. Yep. they're very similar in that sense as well. Yep. So now going into the next weekend, we have two more CAA matchups. We have. Northeastern and Hofstra. So talk about those matchups going in. Yeah, this is uh, going to be a really exciting, I think, very exciting weekend for us. Uh, we have uh, Northeastern, uh, who has really been a, um, essentially the top team in the CAA the last two years. They've won the last two conference championships and 
very, very well coached by Tracy uh, uh, Leone. Um, really scrappy uh, team, very s quick, um, just swarms the ball. Um, and then we have Hofstra, who has had, you know, the Leah Galton has really left her mark on the CAA already. Yeah, she was rookie of the year, freshman year. She's been two-time player of the year. She, she's not their only weapon. So um, these are two games. Uh, we beat them, Hofstra, last year up at their place, regular season, and then we lost in a barn burner 4-3 to three in, the, in, the, in the conference uh, semifinal. So there's certainly – a lot of spirited history between the two programs, and I, I expect it to be that way. The other aspect of this is these games uh, kind of count double for us. Not only do they help in our placement for CA qualification, but they're also both high RPI, te uh, RPI teams. Um, I think Hofstra is in the mid-20s uh, right now, and Northeastern's in the mid-30s or even lower, where you know, uh, towards the end of the year, you win a couple of these games, uh, they help in your at-large consideration should you not step on any landmines and do stupid things uh, down the road as well. So I think our kids will be very motivated and, and up for these games. Hey, well, after a weekend of being on the road, we'll have a weekend of being at home. We do have several promotions going on this weekend. We have a what we're calling March of Madness of fans marching to the stadium Friday night. We'll be doing a Soctoberfest theme this month, so there will be free root beer floats at the games and much more. So stay tuned on jamiesports.com as well as on social media, Facebook, Twitter, uh, YouTube. So, Coach, thank you very much. Can, can I get a root beer float? Oh, we'll hook you up. <laughs> All right. I, I love those. <laughs> Thanks again, Nate.